And in this context, you are talking about some of the impact of uh, the occupation on the health system. So, in a larger level, how has the health system been affected, especially when it comes to personnel and equipment? When it comes to doctors, healthcare personnel, in terms of their training, in terms of the psychological situation they're in, how what is happening right now? Okay, yes, of course. Uh, when there is a, the lockdown, all the medical, uh, all the healthcare system. Uh, they are not in lockdown. All the healthcare uh, professionals, they should be ready and in the first uh, in the first line. So yes, of course, uh, uh, in the earlier uh, uh, time of uh, COVID-19, like I'm talking about March time, uh, most of the organization, even the the NGOs and the private, and even the Ministry of Health, they have difficulty in. Uh, uh, in supporting the availability of uh, all the COVID-19 uh, uh, precaution, like uh, the the gowns, the masks, the fields, the gloves, the hygiene kits, and the, uh, all the disinfectants. But now, um, but because of WHO and other uh, international, uh, uh, they start to to have it in the in uh, to uh, to be available, and the private sector they start also uh, to to bring this kind of equipment, but it was very expensive. It was 10, let's say 10 uh, uh, times more uh, their uh, price. Uh, that, uh, for example, we couldn't uh, buy for our, our staff, but uh, at least now uh, time, uh, the situation is much better. Now most of the bro uh, protective uh, devices and uh, uh, equipment is available <coughs> for, the, for the medical uh, staff. Of course, uh, the medical staff from uh, nurses and doctors uh, uh, as a health system, they suffer from shortage of, uh, uh, of nurses and, uh, and doctors. And you know, some doctors and nurses and uh, technicians, lab technicians, for example, they have their own problems that, uh, for example, she's br uh, pregnant or they have some chronic disease, they should stay uh, according to the criteria, they should be staying at home. Uh, and this is what uh, happened uh, in the Ministry of Health and in our uh, organization that uh, we uh, ask them to be to stay at home because they have a, uh, medical, other medical uh, problems. Um, uh, when the team uh, of uh, nurses and doctors uh, uh, go to in the, in the work in the quarantine areas, they should stay there for 14 days. Right. Uh, uh, after 14 days, they should go back. So this is uh, uh, this means that uh, those, uh, medical staff they are isolated from their social uh, network. They are isolated from their families, from their children. Whether I'm talking about men or women, if she is she is mother and uh, uh, she will not see her child or take care of her ch child. Yes, th this is a very difficult situation. And also, yes, uh, psychologically, it's very dramatic. For the medical professional, they were worried that uh, they would be a victim of COVID because uh, of working with the people who are uh, uh, having this kind of uh, virus. Yeah, and there is a number, uh, let's say, of nurses and doctors and get technicians. They were infected by uh, COVID-19 and they were uh, um, in quarantine for uh, for this, and they will have some complication and they uh, they have been in uh, in the ICU bed and under ventilator. But uh, lucky still we don't have any case. Uh, I guess yes. I guess maybe one or two cases uh, they died uh, from COVID, which is uh, uh, let's say uh, something good for. Uh, uh, for medical staff, because we we feel we feel that losing one medical staff or uh, is uh, uh, is it will be a problem for our uh, healthcare system. Uh, in terms of uh, dealing with this kind of virus, uh, there were a plan at the national level to train our doctors and nurses how to protect themselves, how to deal with uh, Ministry of Health and the NGOs. Uh, we, uh, we we do a lot of uh, self support group uh, ventilation uh, to uh, you know uh, do healing for their psychology because yes uh, it's uh, very burning uh, for them and for their emotions and for right. their psychological afraid from uh, having the covid 
uh, feeling are they are isolated from their networks and families and friends. Uh, uh, because, uh, the stigmatization also is uh, very important for the medical staff and for the people. Uh, they are afraid and they don't want to be other people and their neighbors to know that they have uh, COVID. You know, this is this, uh, the situation of uh, stigmatization is very difficult. So yes, there is a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, psychological intervention uh, uh, provided by uh, the psychologist, uh, mm -hmm. but provided by uh, uh, team uh, working inside organization, like our organization we did for our healthy professionals. We did also psychological support through helplines uh, for, uh, for the uh, women, for uh, people with disability, for uh, elderly people, for uh, also people inside the, the quarantine. Uh, we, uh, we have a, a hotline and the numbers, and there's another organization also, they give uh, support uh, through, uh, through telephone and, uh, or WhatsApp or Skype, uh, because also as an organization, um, and as a healthcare system, also they deal with uh, uh, with the victim of violence. Uh, we get so we continue provide them uh, support through the uh, phone. We, uh, many services provided uh, uh, face to face. Mm -hmm. We uh, to uh, through phone call. For example, uh, uh, in uh, in our organization. Uh, unless we prepare, till we prepare our uh, centers as a primary healthcare centers uh, with a tent and uh, and screening area, we were calling our uh, uh, clients uh, like the pregnant woman uh, through the phone call, telling right. them what to do and so on. Uh, so yes, we find we try to find alternative. Uh, we, we use as a medical uh, staff uh, to work in uh, during intifada and during the emergency during uh, uh, in the, in this conflict uh, to always we will find uh, an alternative and the, the beauty of the work that uh, we have a national uh, health uh, committee uh, run by ministry of health all the health sectors uh, set and they talk about the plan, the protocol, what to do, how we can divide the work, who can take care of the psychological support, who can right. uh, go for home visits or do uh, uh, mobile clinic, because we continue to do mobile clinic, reach the people in marginalized area, do home visits with all the precaution needed, uh, provide the sanitation material for the people, and for, uh, for the poor area, the poor area and the very marginalized area, provide medication for the people with the uh, uh, with chronic disease because you know, uh, there is an interruption in the system in the protocol for elderly people for the people with disability for chronic disease people for right. women, cancer people so we try uh, to as a uh, healthcare system as an organization and uh, as a health activist to uh, focus and uh, reach those uh, groups uh, uh, and provide them with at least primary healthcare care uh, uh, service, services unless the, uh, the thing go retained back to, to the normal life, uh, hopefully. Thank you so much, Adar, for talking to us. You're uh, welcome. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah,